Hi everyone, so in this video we are going to do the fourth challenge JNI viewer of the Android application exploitation series of Karachi. This was the second round and um, we are going to you know start with the static analysis in this one and then we are going to do some dynamic stuff you know just you know kind of work with the application a little bit. So first I'm going to just install that and you know then we are going to open the application you know just take a quick look like uh, how it looks whatever it has. So we can see that we have three fields in here, login, password, and flag field, and then we have a login button here. You know, just add something in here, and it doesn't give anything. Send empty, and it says try again. That's cool. So let's take a look at the source and see what it says. How can it help us? So looking at the main activity, um, we can see that we have that flag text, three text fields, and one login button over here. And then we can see that, this is interesting, right? So unique something unique in the Karachi challenges so we have a native library uh, which is being referenced right and then from the, that native library these methods are being called so how to identify if some method is from native or something uh, you know whenever you see this keyword native here you would always see you know a static native library being imported uh, which already had uh, have the methods pre-compiled in it in C or C++ code which you know makes the application um, run faster basically i mean if it's a really big application if you don't want to run java code right so since we all know it's like real slow example is perp suite <laughs> okay so we have the native library here and you know let's see down here so when the button gets clicked we're not going to like you know go line by line here we can just see that you know when the button gets clicked this is what is going to happen inside so it checks if the length of the input is zero equal to zero or less than that is going to say try again so that is what happened here right it just said try again and then if it isn't and then it's going to return if it isn't it's is going to create two variables and it is first these variables are going to store our input and then these two variables are going to store the input actually the actual username and password so then it is going to do a comparison so if you go and you know take a look at the static uh, native library which we're going to do we will see a compare str compare function being happening in c yeah right uh, and then you know um, I, i'm not sure if it will contain that or maybe uh, but you know uh, since it is implemented here in java i don't think so right it will just contain these values so uh, how do we fetch these values right um, we are going to see a really simple way and some difficult ways and you know the intended way or the right way which you should do stuff right so we are going to do at two to three methods and then we are going to you know utilize those methods randomly in the future so uh, the first thing you can do here is you know just use frida uh, or use objection and you know just take a look at whatever this method is going to return so uh, for that I'm going to use RMS which is a really cool tool um, which you know just uh, runs Frida code for you and you don't have to do anything you know just basically sit back Android the application name is viewer JNI and then it is going to you know just load that okay so we need to run Frida first so that would be ADP shell Frida server right so you need to run Frida server in order for this to interact with it right I'm going to move this over here Com and is not real on device Robert are explicitly here to change it I'm not sure what happened. So, so default classes. Um, I think that's cool. Um, I think we can ignore this probably. And then now try down RMS. And it will, if you see, it will just you know splash the screen again. And we are going to load the classes, right? So this doesn't load all the classes which get called, right? So you know, just add something in here, right? And then do this. And now it is going to load almost every class which is being referenced right uh, i'm not sure if we got the count but this scroll bar length might have increased right then we're going to add a filter for example uh, example uh, sorry we have to do the load classes again do we have this exact count we do the filter example and then you know we are going to you know hook all these so hook selected there we go and then I'm going to load the methods of these uh, activities. And then we can see here that, you know, we got those JNI from username, JNI from password. And then we are going to, you know, just uh, hook these methods. And whenever this method, you know, return something or anything uh, have in the stack, we're going to get that, right? So in runtime, I'll just add something wrong in here. And we see that we have a lot of input in here. 
and then we can see that from this method jni from username it returned output welcome and then this method returned good cracker that's awesome right so we got the username and password we didn't have to do much stuff uh, we're going to actually you know look at the native library itself so i typed f11 and i'm going to space that in here and there we go we got the first flag a uh, load of methods which got gold in the background and you can see the hex string which it returned and then uh, it hex decoded that which is a method in here hex to string so i think this was returned from hex to string method right right you can see that right so we got the first flag in from here now what about the second and third flag also uh, what about statically looking at the library so right now we are going to do that so you know just close rms i i, I was just demoing that right um, so for for those we are going to actually decompile this application using jetx right so this will give us the source you can also export the source from you know save all i guess and then it will save all the source files but i'm just going to do that i think the libraries are in here right so we have cross platform libraries uh whenever you compile application and install you i think it contains for that right 32 bit 64 arm and different version of it so we are going to look at this file right i'm going to start gidra you can set it up i don't think so it'll be that much difficult to do so yeah we are can we just import that in here i don't think so you know we, we should create a probably a new project so you know just um i think that one exists there already so practice kidra and i'm going to name this chain viewer khi finish and then i'm going to import that so file which we had in here inside this Hydra file. This this does that import it? Oh, it did. Cool. Right. I I just opened the folder right here and I dragged it. So yeah. And there we go. We can just double click it and it'll open the analyzer. This is going to analyze the methods and functions and everything from the static native library, and we will see the methods popping up in here anytime soon. Right. So uh, how do you know uh, these methods, right? So it always comes in with this name, com example, the app package name, and then underscore the method name. So here you can see Java, com example, the package name, and then the method name, right? And then inside we have all those methods. So break, um, break one, two, three, four. We have a method zero in there as well. Where is that X? Here it is. So zero break right these methods are not being called in there but they do exist here right so again always look for you know uh, extra functionality or hidden functionality which is not being used anywhere in the application but exists in the native code so we can take a look at here in username and password so that tells us that we didn't have to use rms at all let's say if it was decrypting it and then returning it you know that would have made our job really easy but in this case you know you could have just opened gidra and get those strings right and then we can see that we have this dna flag method over here uh which isn't being called anywhere in the application right so here it had uh, it has a hex string and then it has this so probably i think the hex string is probably equivalent to this uh but you know just to be safe we're going to decode that okay cool so we got the third and second flag right from this application right second flag we already got the first flag the second flag and the third flag so that was it pretty much simple um i just want to take a quick look in the strings file if you know there is anything in there which we want to you know get our hands on do we have a flag string in here we don't that's cool right so there we go you got both the second and third flags in here so you know um if uh you skip that you know you could have just said that maybe just uh storing this decoded value in here you could have you know lost this flag so yeah always uh try and take a look at everything uh, unless you exhaust all the resources you have then move on so yep that's it thank you very much see you in the next one